tonight, breaking news as we come on. Late today, authorities revealing the hunt for the alleged Facebook killer has now gone nationwide. Authorities say he shot his victim, then posted it online with a grim warning, claiming there are more victims. Tonight, what we've learned about a ping on a phone. Also tonight, the North Korea showdown, their new threat. The vice president warning North Korea the world has now seen the strike in Syria, the bomb dropped in Afghanistan. The era of strategic patience is over. Our reporter today asking President Trump, what's your next move? New reporting coming in tonight after the deadly military crash on an American golf course. A Black Hawk crashing on the course during training. Witnesses running to the scene. Prince and his secret life. Tonight, newly released search warrants now revealing what was discovered hidden throughout the singer's home. United Airlines under fire again tonight after that doctor was dragged off the plane. Oh my God, look at what you did. Now the couple flying to their wedding and their eye-opening claim. This is ABC World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to be back with you after the holiday. And we begin tonight with that urgent manhunt now going nationwide. The suspected killer who then posted his killing on Facebook. Authorities say the suspect took this video, showing him walking up to an elderly man on the street, a perfect stranger, just before taking his life. In another video, Steve Stevens takes responsibility for that killing, and he says there are more victims. Tonight, U.S. Marshals and the FBI are now joining the hunt. And after focusing on a handful of states today and a ping picked up from a phone, tonight that search is now nationwide. ABC's Alex Perez leads us off from Cleveland. Tonight, the desperate nationwide manhunt for the man who took and posted this video to Facebook. Police say it shows the senseless murder of an elderly man. He could be nearby, he could be far away, anywhere in between. Authorities now offering a $50,000 reward for any information leading to the arrest of the suspect. I'm going to kill this guy right here. The old dude. It was just after 2 p.m. on Easter Sunday when police were alerted to the shocking video. 37-year-old Steve Stevens getting out of his car and walking over to an unsuspecting 74-year-old Robert Godwin Sr. Stevens coldly explaining to his victim he is about to shoot him because of a woman. She's the reason why um, this is about to happen to you. The next moment's too graphic to show. One male shot, GSW to the face. Police racing to the scene of the murder, but the suspect was gone, leaving behind a trail of recent chilling posts. Investigators say in one, he says he lost everything to gambling. I lost everything. I lost everything I had, man. In another, claiming to have killed more than a dozen people. I, I killed 13 people, and I'm about to keep killing until, until until they, until they catch me. Authorities say they have not found any other victims, but the urgent manhunt for Stevens temporarily putting Cleveland universities and hospitals on lockdown. And late Sunday, word that Stevens... Authorities releasing photos of his car. I mean, we're going to make this individual's world very, very, very small. Officials revealing today detectives spoke to Stevens by phone shortly after the murder took place. Uh, they tried to, of course, convince him to turn himself in. Today, Stevens' place of work closed out of concern for its employees' safety. He mentored foster kids at a mental health facility. You know, I'm a case manager at Beach Brooks. You know, I would deal with people's problems every day. Facebook disabling his account after reports of the murder video came in. But that graphic video had already been up for more than two hours. The company saying in a statement, it was a horrific crime, one that has no place on Facebook. We know we need to do better. Tonight, the family of the man who Stevens randomly killed, calling for justice and trying to make sense of their loss. We beyond shocked. It just feels like our heart is just ripped out of our chest, like for somebody to brutally murder my father like that. It's unbelievable. Just horrible. And Alex Perez joins us tonight from Cleveland and Alex authorities uh, this evening saying the suspect did not have a criminal record and we're learning what they found when they searched his home. Yeah, that's right, David. Authorities say they recovered weapons and other evidence that's important to the investigation. They also say the suspect's family and the woman mentioned in that chilling video are cooperating with police. David? All right, Alex Perez leading us off tonight. Alex, thank you. The other major story tonight, the new threat from North Korea. The escalating war of words, North Korea now threatening missile tests every week. Vice President Mike Pence visiting the heavily fortified border, warning North Korea and reminding them about the U.S. strike in Syria
and the U.S. bomb dropped in Afghanistan a week later. And late today, our correspondent asking President Trump, what's next? ABC's chief global affairs correspondent Martha Raddatz reporting from South Korea tonight. Tonight, a defiant North Korea pledging to conduct missile tests on a weekly, monthly, and yearly basis, accusing the White House of pushing the situation there to the brink of war. The summer nuclear war may break out at any moment on the peninsula. But now from President Trump, a blunt warning. Any message from North Korea? Yeah, you gotta behave. <laughs> In Pyongyang this weekend, Kim Jong-un's military might on full display, including what appeared to be a new long-range ballistic missile, canisters of green camo mounted on huge transporters. But amid that show of force, an embarrassing failure, a botched missile test, the weapon exploding seconds after launch. And tonight, questions about whether the U.S. There's a very strong uh, belief that the Americans through cyber methods uh, have been successful on several occasions in interrupting uh, these sort of tests and making them fail. Tensions between the U.S. and North Korea now at a dangerous high. North Korea is a problem. The problem will be taken care of. But just what that means, unclear. The era of strategic patience is over. In South Korea, Vice President Pence visiting the demilitarized zone, delivering a warning of his own. Just in the past two weeks, the world witnessed the strength and resolve of our new president in actions taken in Syria and Afghanistan. North Korea would do well not to test his resolve. Nearly 30,000 American troops are currently stationed in South Korea. We visited one key base just 48 miles from the border. Here, they are at the ready. Their slogan, fight tonight. There aren't many places I go into where it says fight tonight in giant letters. <laughs> Absolutely. It's a little frightening. Absolutely. But uh, to, for us, it's our day-to-day -day training because we don't know when that call is going to come. As for the commander-in-chief, late today when the White House was pressed on whether action was coming on North Korea, Press Secretary Sean Spicer saying the president holds his cards close to the vest. I don't think that you're going to see the president drawing red lines in the sand. Today, when asked his next move, President Trump with just a two-word answer. You'll see. And so let's get to our chief global affairs correspondent, Martha Raddatz, joining us now from Seoul, South Korea tonight. And Martha, we heard the vice president there saying, the world witnessed the strength of our new president and actions taken in Syria and then a week later in Afghanistan. Many back here at home likely wondering tonight, is North Korea... He wants North Korea to hear, but also China. The vice president said he and President Trump have great confidence in China, but if they don't pressure North Korea in a meaningful way, the U.S. and its allies will, David. But Martha, you heard the president today. Make no mistake, he's not revealing anything here. He is not going to tell anybody what he's doing next, David. All right, Martha Raddus reporting in from South Korea. I want to get right to retired Marine Colonel Stephen Ganyard. And Steve, great to have you back with us. First, this new threat from North Korea tonight, the threat to carry out weekly tests. Could they even pull this off? Uh, David, they test for two reasons. The first is to develop new missiles, but they also want to stay on the world stage and stay in people's minds, and so they use old missiles. In 2016, they did that an average of once every two weeks. So once a week is not unreasonable. The world was watching, though, as you know, Steve, over the weekend for any possible nuclear test. How real is that part of the threat? It's very real. David, uh, intelligence analysts have been using satellite overhead imagery to look at this mountainous region where North Korea conducts its underground nuclear tests. They've declared it primed and ready to go. So the next step is all up to Kim. If he uh, lights off that nuke, then he's doing it in direct defiance of the United States. If not, well... We know that he's blinked. All right, Colonel Ganyard with us again tonight. Steve, thank you. Next tonight here, the White House responding to protests across the country, demanding that President Trump, now that he's in the White House, release his tax returns, just as presidents have done for decades now. The protesters at those rallies say they are determined to keep up the fight. In the meantime, another first for the president, the traditional egg roll at the White House today. But as we mentioned, the White House was pressed. Are those taxes coming? And here's ABC's chief White House correspondent, Jonathan Carl. President Trump today signed autographs at his first White House Easter egg roll, mixing holiday tradition with tough talk while standing next to the Easter Bunny. And we will be stronger and bigger and better as a nation 
than ever before. We're right on track. You see what's happening, and we are right on track. So thank you, everybody, for being here. But as the president publicly welcomed all of those young egg rollers, his administration is facing heat now for keeping private the names of people visiting the White House. It's a departure from the practice of the Obama administration, which regularly released White House visitor logs, with rare exceptions for reasons of national security. We maintain the same policy that every other administration did coming up here uh, prior to the last one. And the last one, frankly, was a faux level at, of doing that because when you go through and you scrub everyone's name out that you don't want everyone to know, uh, that really is, is not an honest attempt at doing it. But critics say the move defies the president's promise of transparency. They also point to Trump's refusal to release his tax returns. Over the weekend, tax day protests popped up around the country. And at a town hall meeting today in Little Rock, Republican Senator Tom Cotton got an earful when he tried to defend the president. As far as, far as I'm aware, the president says he's still under audit. Uh, and he said he's going to release him under audit. But he's also... So will his tax returns ever be released? You always talk about, well, under audit, the president says under audit. Is it, is it time just to say once and for all, the president is never going to release his tax returns? Um, we'll have to get back to you on that. You, you won't, I mean, you, so you, I mean, really? <laughs> really. So he may? No, I, I said I'd have to get back to you on that. I think that we're, he is still under audit. The statement still stands. Sean Spicer says he'll get back to you, John. John Carl live at the White House. And... The White House and President Trump both appear not to be wavering on this one. So if he doesn't release his taxes, he'd be the first sitting president in decades not to do so? The first president, David, since Richard Nixon not to release his taxes, which means we know less about this president's sources of incomes, about his financial ties both in the United States and abroad, his charitable contributions, and of course, we know nothing about how much he actually pays in taxes. All right, John Carl at his post at the White House. John, thanks as always. We are learning more tonight about that deadly military crash, a Black Hawk crashing down onto a Maryland golf course. It happened during a training mission, a UH-60 Black Hawk helicopter out of Fort Belvoir, Virginia. Crashing to that golf course in Maryland, witnesses running to the scene there in Leonardtown. Three crew members on board, one did not survive. One of the others is in critical condition tonight. A witness reporting the chopper may have hit trees as it was coming down. There are new revelations tonight from the investigation into the death of the pop star Prince. Newly unsealed records tonight show he had narcotics hidden all throughout his home, none of them prescribed in his own name. And as ABC's Eva Pilgrim reports, there's also one more glaring mystery. Tonight, search warrants concerning music superstar Prince's death unsealed, painting a picture of the singer's opioid addiction. These court documents show investigators found a sizable amount of narcotic medications located inside Paisley Park. The pills hidden in aspirin and other over-the-counter pain relief bottles all over the house. Some of them, including recent ones found in a suitcase along with handwritten lyrics to his 1987 hit, You Got the Look, were prescribed under the name of his longtime friend and drummer, Kirk Johnson, including the oxycodone prescribed by Dr. Todd Schellenberg after Prince's plane made that emergency landing in Moline, Illinois. What's the nature of the emergency? An unresponsive passenger. Johnson picked those drugs up from the pharmacy but told investigators he didn't know Prince was addicted and it was the first time he had done something like that for Prince. The search warrants now show that Schellenberg told investigators he put the prescription in Johnson's name for Prince's privacy. David, what's still not clear is how Prince got the powerful narcotic fentanyl that ultimately killed him. Investigators scoured his computer, email, and phone records for any clues, but found no prescription for fentanyl. David. Eva Pilgrim back on the case for us. Thank you, Eva. And the developing headline out of Arkansas tonight at the courts placed a hold on the executions of eight men. They were all scheduled to die over the next 11 days because one of the drugs to be used expires at the end of the month. Two separate courts have now put stays on those executions. The governor, though, still maintaining he's preparing for that first execution to take place tonight. There is still much more ahead on World News Tonight this Monday. United Airlines under fire again this evening after that doctor was dragged off a plane, what they're accused of now. Also tonight, the traffic nightmare unfolding in an American city, the major highway buckling there, sending a motorcyclist flying into the air. Witnesses say it was like an earthquake under the highway, and it came weeks after this scene. 
There is news coming in tonight after that murder of a female jogger made national headlines. The accused about to make a court appearance. And Prince Harry opening up the personal struggle he's battled for nearly 20 years, what he now says he did after losing his mother at the age of 12. Even the toughest spills are no match for the ultimate vehicle protection. Custom fit WeatherTech floor liners. Order yours today at WeatherTech.com or call 1 800 CarMats. WeatherTech, proudly made in America. Whether it's anniversary night or just another weeknight, there's Viagra single packs for guys with ED. Ask your doctor if your heart is healthy enough for sex. Do not take.